encourage you to watch this video. I was driving on the third mainland when he showed, he just in a flash, showed me two people that I should meet for impartation, Pastor E. Adeboye and Dr. Oyedepo. So I wrote to Pastor Adeboye and got an appointment and got him to pray for me. And then, Bishop Oedipo, I was trying to meet and it just wasn't working out. The relationships that will change your destiny, heaven will reveal them to you. Yeah. It was 95, just before we started this time, you know, and the Holy Spirit had given me a vision. I was driving on the third mainland when he showed, he just in a flash, showed me two people that I should meet for impartation, Pastor E. Adeboye and Dr. Oyedepo. So I wrote to Pastor Adeboye and got an appointment and got him to pray for me. And then, Bishop Oyedepo, I was trying to meet and it just wasn't working out. And Pastor Nika was attending uh, Wobi, the training there. And this particular Monday morning, she had gone and I was just praying. I was just praying. I was praying in the spirit and it was like video I saw her trying to walk through a door and he was trying to walk out and she stepped aside for him to pass through the door That's the and he stopped asked who she was and sent for me now it was too good for me to be true my conclusion at the end of the prayer was that it was my wish that I was just playing in my imagination. I, so I kept it. I didn't even say anything to her. Wednesday evening, she came back from the training and said, guess who I met, met today? I said, who? She said, I met Papa. I said, hey, yes. And he said, you should come on Friday. I said, hey, what happened? What happened? <laughs> she said she was walking out of the office of the dean and he was walking in and stopped. She greeted him, so he stopped. <laughs> said, oh, I know you. She introduced herself. Do you know? I'm, I'm the wife of your son. They said, oh, 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 where is he? he said, ah, he's been trying to see you. He would like to see you to explain to, to you what, what, what happened. He said, P.A., tell him to come on Friday. P.A., make sure Pastor Adebi sees me on Friday. In the early days, you know, of my relationship with Bishop Odebo, I, I wanted to see him every day, if possible, every week. And it was getting complicated. I said, Lord, what's going on? The Holy Spirit said, wait, wh why did I connect you with him? I said, for transference of grace. You told me I can get grace through prayer. I can get it by meditating in the word. And then you said, I can get it from someone that already has it. He said, good. Grace. He said, he said 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say, my knowledge is a carrier of my grace. If you know what he knows, you will carry the grace he's carrying. So, okay. So I would call his PA. Can you please get all the tapes of the last three months for me? Okay, I'm coming by next week to see him and I'll just take all of them or I'll send someone to you tomorrow to take them. I will listen. Anytime I was getting set for the office in the morning, I would play one. While I went to the bathroom, I would keep the bathroom door open. <laughs> I would be listening, listening, listening while I was getting ready to go to the office. When I jumped into the car, there was another one there. In the player, in the car. I, I listened to them over and over and over and over. And every time I listened, I enjoyed the message quite alright. But what I wanted was deeper than that. How does this man think? Where does this man get these things from? I want to be able to think like that. I want to get revelation like that. <laughs> I want this anointing. Uh, Mondays, that would be my free days, I, I could listen to three. Straight stretch. There were some Mondays I would listen to five cassettes. Straight stretch. I wanted it. I wanted what he had. So this particular day, I listened to one. And of course, I was praying as I was listening. As soon as I was done, then I opened the Bible. The first verse that I wanted to meditate on just broke up. I mean, 
I, I saw it like he would see it. The insights came powerfully. I said, hey, wait, wait. I'm thinking like me. What? <laughs> I said, what's happening to me? I said, Holy Spirit, what is happening to me? He said, wait. It took the anointing to write my word. It takes the anointing to understand it. So you tapped the anointing from someone. And you are using that anointing to meditate on my word. That's why you are able to understand it. Hey. <laughs> Life is not hard. Life is not hard. I sat when the faith of Anaku was being constructed. You know. I sat at the side office. Pastor Nika and I were waiting to see Bishop. And that was a big question on my mind. Because there was this, it was this massive project going on. And our church then was struggling, you know, it wasn't growing. So I was thinking, I can't be tapping the grace on this man and our church will not grow. What's going on? There's a break somewhere. There's a break somewhere. Holy Spirit, what's going on? He said, John 6, 28. John 6, 28. I knew what was there, but still, I opened it. Right there at the reception, they were asking Jesus, what must we do that we might walk the works of God? He said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. He said, every time this man has spoken to you, you've been arguing in your mind. Stop arguing. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Even if you don't understand it, you will understand it later. It's good to work with someone that has open eyes. Did I hear you say amen? Yeah. So you can tap the anointing from someone and that anointing can help you to see for yourself. Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Um, Samuel said to Saul the day he anointed him for Samuel 10, you will come to a company of prophets. They will be singing, playing on musical instruments. He said, the spirit that is on them will jump on you. And you also will begin to prophesy. Inspiration is the key to revelation. And what then happens is when you find yourself in an atmosphere where there is someone that is anointed, you can tap into that inspiration. That inspiration can help you to catch your own revelation. Hmm, this impartation thing. 1998, September, I had begun to make a practice of something. Since our own church seemed not to be growing large, I would find every opportunity to go to my pastor's church just to sit down because I wanted to feed my mind with pictures that looked like what God showed me not our limitation remember I said what you look for is what you find so I attended this conference as uh, September I think was it August or September 98 and then I was asking him uh, can I see you next week I'd like to come back next week uh, he said, I won't be around next week. I, we have a confer our convention in Kaduna. So I'll be in Kaduna. I said, sir, can I come along? That question was strategic. To me, there was something about hanging around him until I would catch my vision. But that particular one, they had just gotten their first jet. I wanted to fly in it. Should I confess? He said, why not? Fine. Lovely. <laughs> so, of course, the, the first thing was they told us where to come, <laughs> you know, at the airport. So for the first time, I didn't go to the counter. I didn't go to board through. I drove to the airport and walked on the tarmac. I said, okay. And then I saw, I saw private jets. I said, ah. Wow. So the way you have car parks is the way you have jet parks. <laughs> okay. So anyway, when the first night, Potakot, Kaduna, the next day he said he was coming to Lagos. I said I was coming. I was asking him questions along the way. And then, so we left on a Wednesday, came back Thursday, Friday. So he said, tomorrow I'll be going back. 
can I come along again? <laughs> he said, why not? Said, why not? So Friday, we went together. I, I still remember that Friday experience very well because it was just the two of us in the plane. And as the plane took off, he slept off. I sat down. I'm here for serious business. Don't close your eyes. You must not close your eyes. He has worked hard, so he's entitled to his siesta. And you, if you close your eyes, you will not see Esther, you will see somebody else. <laughs> Open your eyes. And then the Holy Spirit was just playing things to my mind. All my excuses died that day. But he has the same background with me. He's an African. He's this, he's that, he's that. I'm even taller. <laughs> Why on this planet <laughs> should I not turn out well? I was processing. And then Saturday we came back. Anyway, two weeks after that trip, I woke up on a Saturday morning and I had been in the vision. And in that vision, himself and Mama drove into our premises. And then he went back into the car. Remember, it's a vision. Because I've had somebody say that. Um, that I said that Bishop Wedeko came to our church and that he planted a tree. That's why our church grew. No be so. It was a dream. It was a dream. It was a dream. But when he planted it, and began to prophesy and then people began, were running Russia and within a short time there was a large crowd it was a new building inside was packed out outside was packed out and then they left after they left pastor friends from around the city began to shake hands with pastor Nick and myself and I woke up I said Lord this is a vision now it, it was a vision because God does not normally use dreams to talk to me so I usually don't remember my dreams. And I don't bother. Some, some people say, yeah, I had a dream, but I can't remember. Leave it. <laughs> He's not a difficult God. If he really wants you <laughs> to know what's in the dream, he will show you again. Or tell you what it is. Leave it. But the point I'm trying to make is that I believe it was the impartation from my hanging around him that positioned me in that place where I was able to capture this thing for myself. And it wasn't a Jew, it was big. What I saw that season is still manifesting till now, almost 20 years later. 